First, I'm on these mixtape stuff, something I didn't want to do. I was fighting the mixtape game like crazy. I was like, man, I ain't doing that stuff. I'm like, I was giving away music, giving away rhymes. But I was like, you know what? If I do a mixtape, I'm going to do it different than everybody does it because everybody just shows off their skills. They never really show off who they are. Well, what people don't know is I'm funny, I'm, I'm comedy, right? Everybody always say, why you didn't choose comedy over hip hop? Um, I could sing a little bit. Um, I, I got out, outlandish thinking. So I said, you know what? Plus, I don't sound the same on every song. If you go listen to all the stuff I did on the Mix A Lot records, you'll be like, that's him? You couldn't pick me up out of a lineup. I had different voices and everything else. And so on my records, on these mixtapes I'm doing, I'm doing them by genres instead of just making a mixtape and they're well thought out. So the Retirement Plan Volume 1, I showed more skills and talked about personal things that was bugging me. On 2, I did all West Coast, right? So I dumbed my style down, I adjusted to different styles, and then on the next one, I'm doing all South, right? And not only am I doing South, but you're not, you, you can listen to him and not even tell. You'll be like, is he really from the South or is he not? I'm just showing people that they forgot about the talent and exposing the talent instead of just trying to be so hard and trying to be so right down the line. Mix a lot did a song called Square Dance Rap, and it was a weird voice. No one ever questioned that. It was like that was tight. Well, there's not that no one's creative like that anymore. Now, if I did a song and I rapped it all Japanese, that's impressive to me. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to bring out of my mixtapes. Like, if you're going to do something, it needs to go steps. It don't need to be like this. It needs to be steps. So then it also helps you because it says, okay, they didn't like that, but they're going to like this. So I'm getting all of y'all to eventually, they're not even knowing it, that I'm just reeling people in by what they like. I'm not putting myself in one genre box. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get you, you, and you. And then when I do a show, you're going to say, what are you doing here? You don't even like this. Nah, he got that one song. Or he got that one song I like. Or that one album. Oh, yeah, I didn't like that album. But the bottom line is I got you guys here. So I'm not, I'm not trying to change the game because that's hard, especially now. If it happens, it happens. But And then the retirement plan album is just... It's a mix-up of different stuff. I got a song called It's Not Easy that's going to blow people's mind because I'm talking about real-life situations. It, the first verse is, it ain't easy being me, how I was in foreclosure with my house, about to lose it, and how I was living out what they were talking about in the media and just watching it on TV and not knowing if you're going to be able to sleep tomorrow in your own house. Um, the second verse is, it's not easy being you, um, the people, um, it's not easy going to the, you know, going to use your gas card and that's gone because you overdraft and the gas prices just got high so you didn't get that many gallons. Um, the third verse is it's not easy being music. So I'm like speaking as I'm the music saying it's not easy being me because everybody's abusing me. Um, talking about how there's, you know, a, a hundred songs in an iPod and probably only heard the song one time. That's just showing you the saturation of music. It's not easy. Um, going platinum anymore. You don't see me in people's homes. I'm talking like if I was the platinum plaque on the wall, talking like I'm depressed because now I'm not being given to a lot of people. Um, so, I mean, I'm just, it, it's crazy. The song is crazy. And um, my, my dude, uh, Jordan Omley, he's producing like all these pop records. Um, he did the last Backstreet Boys and all those type of people. He produced the song. And it's like, so these records, these dip. And then I'm putting out um, Cars That Go Boom. Um, and then, I'm, you know, touching. Because I'm going back to the old school way of marketing. I don't think the game is dead. I think people got lazy because of the technology, right? So instead of going out there, they rather do this. So I'm trying to line my stuff up where it's like, okay, here's the dance. Here's for the car people with the booms. Now here's for my serious people. You know what I mean? So... The retirement plan is definitely a good look. Um, it's going to be crazy because it's like this. I'm happy with my music now. Back when 
I was doing music with, uh, you know, mixing them. Predominantly, I was, I was just confused. I, I didn't know who I was. That's why my music sounded so different, truthfully, because I didn't know who I was. I, I didn't. I wasn't making a lot of decisions. It was like, take this record. Remember that record you did back then? Put that with this record and did it. So my record didn't have a script. It was just a record, and I wasn't too happy with it because I didn't like those songs either. But someone convinced me put these out. But now this record is all me. I come in this studio. I come in here four o'clock in, in, in the afternoon and I won't leave till seven o'clock the next morning and I'll be here by myself tracking my own vocals, you know, pre-mixing my own music. And then when Mark, the studio guy comes in the, um, that owns it, he will sit down and do all the corrections. But actually I got a process. I'll do the song, record it, and then I will call Trife and then Trife will come in and organize it and do all the edits where the beat stop, whatever he wants. I want him to do the trickery. And then after he's done, then Mark would come in and then he would mix the, the whole uh, product. But I won't keep going with a song if I don't feel it, if I don't like it. I don't believe in scratch songs. I believe in this is what I like, this is what I'm gonna do. If it's challenging me, then I won't do it. I don't care how much I like the beat. If it's challenging me, and it's, then it means that we're not communicating right. This is a forced record. So I just throw it away. I said, forget it. I'm not even doing it. So that's why I believe in this record because it's, it's more me. It's just from the heart. Um, it's what I want to give people. If you don't like it, hey, that's cool. You know, I always look at it like this. Maybe things are not like now. will be like later. It might be, you know, but look at Jimi Hendrix. People don't even realize Jimi Hendrix didn't sell records until he died. Jimi Hendrix was big in certain parts. There was times in Europe, if you look at his documentary, where people didn't like him, you know what I mean? They was booing him. There was times he got booed. And then as soon as Jimmy died, because people didn't understand the detuning of the guitar, so they was like, this ain't, same thing they did with grunge. This ain't music, what is this? What is he doing to the guitar? What is, but then when he passed away, they were like, this is crazy. How'd he make that sound? Where'd he get that from? And then they start exploring where he was from. And then they found out that there was grunge and that's where, the, you know, there was different music in Seattle. They, you know, they work with what they got. You know what I mean? And he sold, you know, millions of records, but he didn't get to live that, that life. When, if he was still here, he didn't have that money. Now you got family fighting for that money. You know what I mean? So some things that ain't, you know, understood now is could be because you're ahead of your time or you, or people's just not set up for it yet. Or the picture wasn't painted properly, you know. Same thing with Elvis Presley. Of course he was big, but he was bigger when he died. Same thing with Michael Jackson. He was wacko jacko, but now all his sales went through the roof. They said his new, I mean, his old album sold. His, one of his albums that didn't do good end up going double platinum when he died. So, you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's crazy. It's sad, but it's like people don't understand you until they see you bleeding. You know what I mean? And this world has always been that way. You know, people, you know, Obama was the best thing that happened, but now he's, he's getting his wounds, right? So it's like, we love you enough to kill you. That's how I look at it. You can love someone, you can overlove someone to the point where you kill them. Because it's like a, a mother that has her child and she, she, she's happy at birth. And she's like, that's my son. But she gets frustrated because she can't control him when he gets 14, 15. So she says the most devious things to him. Like, somebody going to kill you. You're not all you think you are. Because she thinks that she's trying to tell him, you know what I mean, that he doesn't know it all, that he doesn't have it figured out. She's trying to imply things to him that she's seen happen to other people. But what she don't know is that she's planting a seed. And when that seed gets watered, that kid is going to start living that life that she's implanting in him. And then he's going to go out there and he is going to get killed. And he is going to sell drugs. And he is, something is going to happen. And then when he die. You're going to go to the funeral like every other person and say he was such a great person. He cared about people. 
He loved people. He did this. Well, these are the things you should have told him when he was alive. You know what I mean? So it's like people love you to kill you. And that's how I look at this industry. It's like we're going to boost you all the way up. And then the same people that wrote about you and boosted you all up are going to wait till you get there and you get boring to them. And then they're going to bring you right back down with the same pen that they brought you up with. And then you're going to get depressed, go into hiding, start doing drugs, living your life, sleeping with all different women, and eventually something is going to kill you. So I always look at it like that's why you stay true to who you are. So anything someone says to you is just something they say, and you don't take those words and water them. You know what I mean?